right, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Talking about J.C. O'Hara, I actually was just reading an article by him last night. So um, if you would, come with me to 2 Timothy chapter 4, please. start in at verse 1. Paul writing to Timothy, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Mm. Except a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for all the saints that are here, Lord, that are, are faithful to come every week and um, oftentimes drive long distances, Lord, and help in the ministry. And we also thank you for all the saints that aren't here, Lord, that are um, dealing with, with health, health issues and having a, a really hard time right now. And, I just pray, Lord, that you give them that, that comfort and that peace that passeth understanding. Yes, I just thank you so much, Lord, always for your son who died for us, Lord. And though he was crucified in weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God and that you seem fit to save us, Lord, and that we share in that death and in that resurrection life. And I thank you so much for your word, Lord, and that your Holy Spirit uses it to enlighten us and empower us and to be able to learn and share with one another, Lord. And I always thank you for the opportunity to share myself. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Okay. So, um, I want to share with you guys, I I never um, really had the intention to do this, you know, sometimes talking about other ministers and things that you hear. And while I never want to attack anybody, I, I had a really, really interesting conversation about a week and a half ago. Um, I was with my friend Brad. We don't get together much anymore. He's got kids. And uh, he had some free time. He's got a little camp up in North Florida where they, you know, they hog hunt and do different things. And I just decided I'd take a day or two and, and go visit with him. And when I got up there, I got to meet another, gen another gentleman in the club, and his name was Chris. Real nice guy. And after talking to Chris for a while, he let me know that he was the vice president of Southeastern College. Southeastern College is back in Lakeland, and it's a it's a Pentecostal um, denomination, Christian church, Assemblies of God, and I thought, man, we might have a good opportunity to, to talk about some things, and sure enough, my buddy Brad told me that, um, or told him, he's like, well, you, you should talk to Jared sometimes, you guys have good discussions, he loves reading his Bible, and sure enough, we did, we started talking a little bit, and he shared with me that before he was the vice president of this Christian school, that he was actually a pastor for 17 years. And that he even would preach sometimes at the church that I went to growing up as a kid. So we had some common ground there to start. And, and he really was a great guy, but he asked me if I still go to Victory Church. And I said, no, I don't. I go to a, a church in Dade City. And he asked me, well, what denomination are you guys? And I told him, I said, we're, we're a non-denominational church. But he pressed the next question, and he says, well, yeah, I know that, but what's your theological stripe, if you will? And I said, well, if, if you want to put a, a name on it, we'd be dispensational. And the moment I said that, he put his head down and started shaking his head. And um, I, I, was, I didn't want to press it too much. My friend Brad was there, but I, I had to, and I just said, so if you don't mind me asking, um, I kind of noticed you, you took the word dispensational negative. And he goes, yeah, I got to tell you, he says, you know, being in the ministry for 17 years and now being a vice president, I talk to people all the time. And, you know, the thing with the dispensational people is that they stress doctrine too much. <laughs> and that was that was his charge. And I, I just kept listening. And I said, I said, well, what do you mean by that? He says, you know, doctrine's fine and everything, but dispensationalists, they take the Bible too literally. Yes. <laughs> and. I asked him, I says, I says, well, if you don't take the Bible literally, where do you find truth? And, you know, I kind of, he kind of reverted back and I could tell he was a little stumped, but I was trying not to be offensive at the same time. I said, hey, I understand we all have um, 
different thoughts on scriptures, but we have to stick with the word. And we started talking a little bit. And I, I didn't do too much, but I did. I brought up a couple passages, you know, you know, just asking the question, what, what do you think about these two verses? And he really, towards the end of it, he made it quite clear that he wasn't in to the scriptures. He told me, he goes, you know what? He goes, oftentimes people come to me with questions and I got a whole team of theology experts in the room mm -hmm. next to mine and I just send them to them. He says, if, if you want to spend your whole life studying the scriptures and trying to find the answers, he says, you can do that. And I said, well, well, what's your goal? What do you do? And he goes, well, I just tell people to love Jesus and do the best they can. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that sounds good to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But we know that's that's not what God wants. Mm -hmm. And after having that experience, it, it reminded me of this verse right here, where Paul's charging Timothy, and we know that um, if you just verse three and or chapter three and verse sixteen, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, instruction, and in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And this charge that Paul gives Timothy is not just to Timothy. Right. You know, this this applies for us too. And in our in our passage in chapter four, where Paul writes, I charge thee therefore before before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in the kingdom, you see what Paul tells Timothy to preach? He says preach the word. Not philosophy. Mm -hmm. Not traditions of men and not our feelings. You know, Paul had to scold the Corinthians because they were big on the wisdom of this world and their own philosophies. Yeah. And he said it's foolishness. Mm -hmm. And he even let them know that the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of men. And then he also says, thinking about when do we preach the word? Be instant, in season and out of season. It's very easy when the truth is popular, when people are grabbing it. It's when it's out of season, the time when they won't hear it, when you have to fight the good fight of faith. We know we speak the truth and love, but there is a fight going on, and these things matter to God. Amen. And in verse 3, oh, back in verse 2, preach the word, be instant, in, instant, in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and what? Doctrine. 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 And that was this gentleman's big problem the problem was the doctrine and he even told me that's very old school that that was his word for that and it, you know it, it actually it broke my heart that someone yeah. who was a minister for 17 years yeah. and now one of the top guys in a big christian college to see how he felt about the scriptures and the truth of god's word was really it, it's something i've come to know and i almost expected it but it's still shocking to hear yeah. someone like that say something and then um you know, we, we don't get caught up in the results. You know, we, we're, we want to be faithful. We want to be workmen approved unto God. And when we do that, we have to leave the results in God's hands. And why God will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth, we know that not all men will be saved. And I found some comfort when I was thinking about Noah. And in, in 2 Peter... Uh, he calls Noah a preacher of righteousness. And I, I didn't go back and look at how long Noah preached for, but we know it wasn't just that Noah. Well, we know it started at 120 years, you know, when God gave him the warning. But, you know, to think about Noah and him being faithful to the Lord and preaching righteousness, you know how many souls were saved? Eight souls. And, and again, why God would have all men to be saved, and thankfully there's a lot more than eight people today, it just shows you that even despite the lack of numbers, Noah was called a preacher of righteousness. He wasn't looked at to see how many hands he could get to raise and come forward to the altar like many churches are doing. It, it was a true salvation from the heart. And even our apostle Paul, he also experienced the same thing. We know Paul, he probably forgot more than we'll ever, we'll ever know. Amen. But if you just come to, um, still in 2 Timothy, if you go to chapter 1, verse 15, I just want to get one verse really quickly. 2 Timothy, up chapter 1, 15. 
we know that Paul on his missionary journeys, he went through uh, all of Asia. And, you know, that's not the Asia we think of today, but that was his missionary travels. And he says, he had to say these words of Timothy. This thou knowest, that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me, of whom are Phygelus and Hermogenes. So, again, even the Apostle Paul, if you find some comfort there that when you're sharing the gospel with people and you get the long faces and you get the opposition, when you're sharing the mystery and God's word rightly divided, the scriptures let us know these things are to be expected, but we don't let it move us. Amen. We preach the word and we stand for the truth. Amen. And come with me to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, if you will. verse 14 it says now thanks be unto God which always causes us to triumph in Christ always causes us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place for we are unto God a sweet savor in Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish to the one we are the savor of death unto death and to the other the savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God. In the sight of God speak we in Christ. Amen. And I love uh, in, in verse 17, he says, we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. And I, I know Peter said the same thing in his epistles, that unlearned men, they twist and they rest the scriptures. And how convenient... To not take the Bible literally. The moment you do that, you can make it say whatever you want to, and now there is no absolute truth. Right. But Paul says, we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. And I love how he calls us a sweet savor of Christ. And he says that to the one we are the savor of death. You know, when you bring that gospel message, this grace message that can save men's souls, you know what happens when you reject life? You get death. And we are that warning and oftentimes we too are that judgment when they stand before the lord and they didn't trust christ as their savior they're without excuse we were that we were that uh we were that savor of death unto death and to, uh, to us who have trusted christ who have received the light and people who will who we share with we are that savor unto life and god's um god's made us sufficient for all these things and uh, if you would, I want to go back to 2 Timothy in closing. So we've been talking this morning about taking a stand and fighting the good fight of faith. But I want to I want to share this with you because this is something that I struggled with early on, and many have you are, you know, pounding people over the head and trying to make them feel dumb for what they don't know. You know, it's frequently used and seldom works. So the, God gives us instruction on how we're supposed to instruct men. And in 2 Timothy chapter 2, uh, let's start in verse 23. Paul again says, But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. And that's how we do it. We do it with love and we do it with gentleness. And I've, I've heard many stories, you know, one of, uh, been like a father to me in the Lord is John Fredrickson who preached here a couple months ago and he was sharing with me uh, a gentleman, you guys probably know Lee Beckemeyer. Yeah. And how he was, uh, Pastor John was a Baptist, and how Lee Beckemeyer gently instructed him and, and used asking him questions rather than attacking him. And, you know, you can see how, how Lee was used to bring him to a knowledge of the truth. And uh, we talked about J.C. O'Hare this morning, and I was just reminded of a quote that he used. Speaking of men who don't take the Bible literally and put a high priority on doctrine, 
I think it, it goes, those that spiritualize the scriptures tell spiritual lies. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind. All right, thank you guys. Mm -hmm.